Hello everyone and welcome back to another Stormworks tutorial. Now in today's video we are going to be showing you an updated step-by-step -step guide. Uh, this is going to be showing you how to build a jet engine here in advanced mode as of 0.5.11. Now we'll go through each one of the components as well how to place them down, uh, pipe them all up and finally show you how to do all the logic for them and also what components you'll need to do the logic. Now if you're enjoying these videos comment below and let me know what else you would like to see in any of my future videos along with that while there don't forget to hit that like and subscribe button and remember to click that bell icon uh, to be notified of any of my upcoming content as soon as it gets posted so let's get straight into it and get started so to get started we're back here in the workbench now the first thing we're going to do is we're actually going to go over the different components that are needed to build a jet engine now obviously in the workbench and when you go into your inventory you have quite a few different options of how you want to do it now there are some components that are required for every single engine and there are other components that you can obviously mix and match but we'll go through each one of them tell you what they do and then obviously go over the logic pieces for them and then what we'll do is we'll actually start building the engine out itself and tell you how to get it all connected now the first component as you can see over here is going to be the combustion chamber pretty straightforward what it does is combusts the engine pretty easy takes the fuel mixes it together and that's it we're then going to move on to the compressor itself this is where you go it goes ahead and takes the air compresses it and then sends it through the system itself we have a couple different ducts that we can go ahead to extend the engine or split it off or whatever pretty much you can get quite creative with these ducts and put it in any orientation that you want to do we then move on to the three different types of exhaust for these engines now the engine itself doesn't need exhaust the only time you will need an exhaust is if you want power to come out or thrust to come out of the end of the engine or the back of the engine where you angle this towards so you obviously have the jet exhaust afterburner as in the description, pretty much what it does is it will then initiate the afterburner when you turn it on just over here, and that will give you more thrust. We then have a normal exhaust. We then have a rotating exhaust. The rotating exhaust, as it says once again in the description, it can rotate depending on the number that you give it. We have two other components, which are going to be the two types of turbines. Now, you have the normal turbine small. This is going to be if you want power to come out of the exhaust. There is no external outputs for this. Whereas if you move on to the jet turbine medium, this is where you actually get an output of power. So like we did with all the other engines, we have a power output. This is where we would then go ahead and connect it to obviously your propeller or prop, whatever you want to go ahead and connect it to. But the reason behind this is you're actually taking power away from the jet engine and diverting it to somewhere else. So this is what we would use for helicopters. We would connect the output from this over to the propellers and this would obviously drive the helicopter itself. You then have two different types of jet intakes. You have the small jet intake, which is exactly the same size as the jet engine itself. It's a three by three piece. And then you move on to the large piece. I don't know the exact number of blocks of it, but it's a little bit larger, but we'll play with it and I'll show you guys exactly what it looks like. Now, moving on to actually building the engine itself. Now, what I'm going to go ahead and do is I'm just gonna enable my symmetry block, and that's simply just to go ahead and actually build the base that we're going to be doing for this tutorial. As always, we always need a base to build on. Now. The first part that you want to, to obviously have is going to be the intake. Now I'll show you the jet engine large one first to show you the diameters of this. It's a little bit larger, as I said, in comparison to the small one where we'll go ahead and place it down. You can go ahead and see it over here. It's a little, it's much smaller. Pretty much it's probably about three or three times the size. So yeah, that's pretty much about it. Uh, from there, we're going to be using the small one for the purpose of this video. So I'm just gonna go ahead and place the small one just over here. Once we have the small one placed down, the next thing we want to do is put the compressor down. As I said earlier, the compressor is going to be to take the air in and compress it to send it through to the engine. We're then going to be putting the combustion chamber next. Now, as you can see, while we're placing these things down, you can see little arrows on these components. These arrows need to face backwards. This is the direction of the engine or the airflow going through the engine and needs to face in that direction. Now, if you go ahead and rotate this round, you will now see it has a input for fuel. This is where it goes ahead and mixes the fuel with the air and then combusts it to send it through. Pretty straightforward, pretty simple. Now, the next piece you want to go ahead and do is obviously choose whether you want the jet turbine medium or if you want the jet turbine small. As I said, the small one will not send thrust um, out, out, out of the engine itself. It will only send it out the exhaust. Whereas if you were to go ahead and use the medium one, this is where you can divert the power of it somewhere else. Now we're gonna just angle it over here 
make sure the output is facing the top, still making sure the arrows are facing towards the rear of the actual engine itself. Now you can see if we go ahead and grab our pipe piece, you can now have a power output of the engine. Next you move on, you obviously decide if you want an exhaust or not. Now there is an option if you were to go ahead and actually place the exhaust, there actually is a number input on here that you can actually close and open this. So you actually can do it if even if you didn't want any power coming out of here at any time, you could go ahead and do it. So we're going to go ahead and put one on this example for this tutorial itself. Now. That's pretty much about it for the actual main components of the engine itself. Obviously what you'll still need is fuel. So we're going to go ahead and actually just put a small fuel tank on here just to replicate how you would normally have it in a actual build itself. Now because we used the actual um, jet turbine that actually sends power out, we would actually want some power come out of that. Now you can use a clutch, you can use a gearbox uh, before you actually send it something. But for once again, for the purpose of this video, I'm just gonna go ahead and put a proper propeller just over there and we'll see if the power actually does come out or not. And then last thing you want to do is obviously just connect the pipes up. Um, I'm just gonna connect it pretty simply, just gonna go ahead and use some angled pieces and some straight pieces, and that's gonna be for our fuel going to the engine. You could obviously use some cutoff valves if you wanted to and so on and so forth. Now that's pretty much the basics of the components. Now you will need to obviously control this engine. Now, the most logical way of controlling this engine would be, okay, well, let's just control it how we control the normal engines and put a put a throttle lever and control it that way. That's all good and fair and that would work. However, these engines, and as it was in the previous tutorial and how it has been since we got these jet engines, is they have a limit of 200 RPS, which means anything over that and these things are gonna explode. Now, obviously, doing a signal of zero to one is not actually going to be able to control that. So what you want to do is contr actually control the throttle depending on the RPS value of the engine itself. Now to do that, we're going to be using a PID, but um, before we go ahead and do that, I'm just going to go walk over the other components that we need to go ahead and actually set up before we can actually go ahead and turn this on and get it all done. Now you obviously have a compressor, the compressor needs to be turned on, so you need a normal on off switch. And then lastly, we have the thrust boiler, which I was talking about earlier on. This pretty much means that if you have a zero, it will send power through the, through the thrust, uh, will send thrust through the spoiler. And then you also, or through the exhaust, you also then give it a one. That means that it will turn this off and it will not send any power out of this exhaust. And I'll show you the example of that just now. Now, what I'm going to go ahead and do is just put down this normal throttle lever over here, another one over here. And then what we're also going to be doing is we're going to be putting just a simple toggle button which is going to be for the compressor itself. Now, as I said earlier, these are simple controls. We just connect that over to the compressor itself. This one is gonna get connected to the exhaust and it's pretty simple is this is we're gonna to toggle that to turn it on. The other one over here is what we're going to be doing is we're gonna be starting it on a one value, which means it's closed by default. We also wanna make sure that we have jet fuel enabled because obviously it's a jet engine, it needs jet fuel, will not work. It always spawns and if you're doing a tank here, always make, always make sure you change it, it will spawn as diesel by default. The next thing obviously is we have the throttle to go ahead and control the engine. Now, as I said, you could go ahead and connect it by however it will probably explode almost instantaneously. Now, how we do that, as I said earlier on, is we're going to be using a pit. Now, it's exactly the same as how we did in the old tutorial, pretty much go ahead, grab a pad, place it down, open it up, and the settings that you wanna use, or at least I use and recommend, is gonna be 0 0.01, 0 0.00001, and then a 0 0.1. Now you can play around with that, depending on how quick or how fast it reacts to it, it's up to you. These are the settings I recommend. Now what you want to go ahead and do is connect this throttle value over to the set point, so you're telling it where you want it to be, you're going to be telling the process variable is actually going to be coming from this piece over here which is going to be the turbine piece now we're going to be connecting that to the rps of the engine itself once we've done that we obviously need an on off switch now for the purpose of the tutorial i'm going to have this pid always on so i'm just going to go ahead and grab a constant on signal and there we go that's pretty much all done and set the output is going to go ahead and actually control the throttle of the engine now because this runs on RPS and we're comparing it to RPS, we want to go ahead and configure our actual throttle level for the jet engine to go between zero and 200. I usually recommend doing a value of about 150. You shouldn't need more than this. 
that's my personal recommendation once again you can play with it uh, i think it's about 170 180 and, and then when that's when it starts getting catching on fire and actually explodes so i usually recommend about 150 once again play with it see how it works now because we're obviously here in advanced mode we will need a battery so i'm just going to go ahead and grab a medium-sized battery and place it down on the actual creation itself and then connect the electricity to everything that we need to connect the electricity now as i was saying earlier there are some components that you will definitely need for this and some components you won't need now there are optional pieces as i said the turbine you can choose whichever one you want the exhaust you don't have to have it you could delete this block and leave it standard and that would mean you would have no thrust coming out the back the engine would still work there are a couple hacks or ways of getting around not using this actual combustion chamber over here uh, now once again i'm not going to mention it i'm not going to cover it you can go ahead check out the workshop there's different tutorials on there uh, that you can download and see how they've done it this is pretty much the basic standard way of setting up a jet engine now once we have everything connected double check everything is done everything is connected perfectly the last thing we want to do is go ahead and spawn this in so I'm gonna go ahead, as I said, spawn this in just over here. You can see our jet engine has gone ahead and placed down. Now, what we can go ahead and do is hit our throttle to go up a little bit. You can obviously play around with the sensitivity of this. We wanna go ahead and hit our toggle button. Now, you wanna leave that toggle button on until this jet engine actually combusts. And you can hear it, there we go, it combusted. You can then go ahead and turn that throttle off. You do not want to run that all the time. If you run that all the time, this engine will explode or it will drain your battery either way. Now, obviously we're running our throttle quite low. You can see the propeller is turning. It's sending power out there. Everything is pretty much working. Obviously, if you wanted to, you could go ahead and grab some gauges. You could see how much fuel you have left, uh, how much your RPS, what your air pressure, what your temperature. It's up to you at the end of the day. You can obviously add on. However, this is the basics of it. Obviously, you can see if we go to ahead and increase our throttle, Propeller will start turning quicker and slower, and if we will go ahead to lower it down, it will start to drop, but it will keep on turning, it will always be on. Now, as I said earlier, with the actual spoiler itself, we're gonna test that the thing is gonna go flying. Spoiler is currently set to one, which means no power is coming out of here. If we were to go ahead and drop this, it would now actually divert the power both to the propeller and also to the exhaust, so it will actually shoot it in that direction. We'll go ahead and demonstrate that here. We drop that to zero it should now go ahead and jump off because we are now sending throttle or thrust to the exhaust itself and that's pretty much about it i'm going to leave this thing carrying on going uh, i'm not going to get into any more detail about the jet engines guys uh, if you would like me to go into different types of jet engines and show you a couple different hacks of how to make bigger ones more powerful ones or even uh, smaller ones uh, let me know in the comments below uh, but i think that's pretty much about it so i think we'll go ahead and end today's video over there guys as always i hope you enjoyed it and found it somewhat entertaining and informative as always and i'll see you in the next one